Hola, amigos. ¿Qué tal? This is Stephen Casimiro. I am your host today on the Adventure Journal podcast, and I need to practicando my Espanol for an upcoming trip to Mexico for the Route to Del Jefe bike event, which I'm very excited about. I have not been to Mexico in ages, and my Spanish is muy mal, so you poor folks get to listen to me practice. But onward, today on the Adventure Journal podcast, we are taking a look at one of my heroes, Audrey Sutherland, who wrote numerous books about her adventures and was featured in Adventure Journal Quarterly 02, our second issue, a piece that I wrote for our historical badass column about Audrey. I still have a bunch of her books. They are outlined and dog-eared with notes. She was a very driven woman who had strong opinions and lived her life with adventure every day. So uh, let's dive into this. We ran the story under the headline, Lean and Hard and Sunbrowned and Kind. Audrey Sutherland's lone wolf spirit carried her thousands of solo miles through Hawaii and Alaska. She swam the rugged north coast of Molokai because she couldn't afford a boat. She towed a raft with her, loaded with food and water and shelter because she didn't know what she'd find on the way. Charts at the time were spotty and old, and she knew only that the prevailing currents and wind wouldn't let her retreat. But she went anyway, swimming four or five miles a day and camping at night on empty beaches, alone but for stars and passing whales. In 1962, single mothers of four generally didn't wade into the Pacific Ocean and swim into the unknown with no hope of turning back. But Audrey Sutherland wasn't like most single mothers. From the time she was a little girl in Southern California until she passed away at age 94, Sutherland lived emphatically by the mantra she expressed at every turn. Go simple, go solo, go now. She said, On the first Molokai trip, I got into more than I planned because the maps were inadequate at the time and I didn't know a lot about reading maps either. The only map available in 1962 was a 1928 map. It was neither accurate nor was it at a very big scale to see what was really happening, what it was going to be like along the shore. But I knew I could swim five miles with fins, mask, and snorkel. I don't think it was stupid to try. I think I was just uninformed, but as prepared as I could be with the information that was available at the time. After each trip, I had more. In Molokai, because the current and the wind blow west, you can't go back. It's the coast of no return. Well, Sutherland was game to bend her will to the larger forces of nature, but she was otherwise firm about doing things her way. Born in 1921 and raised adjacent to the rugged San Bernardino Mountains, where her family had a cabin, she learned early the arts and pleasures of self-sufficiency, like sparking a fire, cooking, camping, and finding her way. Her father died when she was just five, leaving her the youngest of six girls, and she often flexed her independence, sometimes running away when she got mad at her siblings, once spending four days on her own with just a blanket roll before climbing to the top of the area's highest peak, 11,503-foot San Gorgonio, about 14 miles away. She entered UCLA at just age 16, worked as an airplane riveter during World War II, and met and married John Sutherland, a Coast Guardsman, in 1942. Ten years later, John was transferred to Hawaii, and they moved to Oahu. There, the marriage fell apart, and Audrey raised their two boys and two girls, mostly on her own, first by teaching swimming and substituting elementary schools, later as a vocational counselor for the U.S. Army which sent her around the islands and as far away as Alaska to convince kids to stay in school. It was then that she developed Audrey's List, an itemization of the skills every child should have by age 16. 
The list includes swim 400 yards easily, do dishes in a strange house and your own, cook a simple meal, see work to be done and do it, care for tools and always put them away after use, splice and put a fixture on an electrical cord, know basic information about five careers that suit you, volunteer to work for a month in each of those fields, clean a paintbrush after use, change a diaper and a tire, listen to an adult talk with interest and empathy, take initiative and responsibility for schoolwork and home chores, dance with any age person, clean a fish and dress a chicken, Drive a car with skill and sanity. Know and take responsibility for sexual conception and protection when needed. Know the basic five of first aid. Restore breathing and heartbeat, control bleeding, dilute poisons, immobilize fractures, treat for shock. Write a business letter. Spend the family income for all bills and necessities for two months. Know basic auto mechanics and simple repair. Find your way across a strange city using public transportation. Be happy and comfortable alone for 10 days, 10 miles from the nearest other person. Save someone, <laughs> save someone from drowning using available equipment. Find a paying job and hold it for a month. Read at a 10th grade level. Read a topographical map and a chart. Know the local drug scene for yourself. Handle a boat safely and competently. Operate a sewing machine and mend your own clothes. Operate a computer as needed. Do your own laundry. Helping other people figure out the direction of their lives inevitably led Sutherland to examine hers. And after flying repeatedly over Southeast Alaska's chain of islands, she knew what she wanted to do next. Explore them in her nine-foot inflatable kayak. She said, I asked for two months time off from the job, leave without pay. I didn't need to, quote, get away. I needed to get, quote, to, to simplicity. I wanted to be lean and hard and sun-browned and kind. Instead, I felt fat and soft and white and mean. I went home and looked at the five-year plan on the wall. Paddle Alaska, number one. I walked into the bathroom and looked at the familiar person in the mirror. Getting older, aren't you, lady? Better to do the physical things now. You can work at a desk later. The next day, I handed in my resignation, effective in two months. Sometimes you have to go ahead and do the most important things, the things you believe in, and not wait until years later when you say, I wish I had gone, I wish I had done, I wish I had kissed. What we most regret are not the errors we make, but the things we didn't do. At age 59, divorced, kids grown, and enough money in the bank to live for a year, Sutherland ordered 24 ocean charts from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and 49 topo maps from the U.S. Geological Survey. She poured over exploring Alaska and British Columbia and a map of the Tongass National Forest, which showed 50 sea-level Forest Service cabins where she could take shelter. She plotted out a chart from Ketchikan to Skagway that she estimate would, estimated would take 80 days. She dried and packed food and mailed it to post offices along the way. And on a Friday in June, she left her office for the last time and that night boarded a plane bound for Alaska. Over the next 20 years, Sutherland returned to the North every summer, almost always alone and in her small inflatable which was light enough for her to lift and slow enough for her to take in the sights. She prepared meticulously, let the tides and weather dictate her pace, sat out dangerous conditions and avoided trouble, except for one close call when she was almost swept by large surf onto a reef. When staying in cabins, she devoted hours to restoring them for the next visitor, replacing firewood, cleaning, and tuning up their stoves the last a particular affinity that took her back to childhood. By the time she put away her Alaska gear for the last time, at age 82, she'd paddled more than 8,000 miles through its cold, tricky waters. Sutherland continued to teach and lecture and share her pearls of wisdom into the last months of her life, 
when Alzheimer's-like dementia led her to hospice in December 2014. When she passed away two months later at age 94, almost all of the remembrances celebrated her motto, go simple, go solo, go now. And why not? They are powerful words, a call to action if there ever was one. But for Sutherland, life was more beautiful, nuanced, and romantic than that. She paddled with bottles of wine tucked into the bow and stern of her, quote, rubber ducky, and a good meal of forged mussels at the end of the day was as important as the day itself. So, yes, go now. But remember also what she wrote in Paddling North. Adventure. The word is adventure, to venture toward. No big declarations of peril, challenge, daring, conquest. No guarantee of making it, just trying toward. Well, that was Audrey Sutherland. You can find her books where you find books. Paddling North, I recommend. There are a bunch of them. They are wonderful. And you can read more about historical badasses like Audrey Sutherland in Adventure Journal Quarterly, which you can get at subscribe to aj.com. Thank you so much for listening to us. I am curious what your thoughts are on Audrey's list. It certainly, it, it definitely reads like a product of its time, which was decades ago. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious what a what your list for kids would look like today, what my list for kids would look like today. It's uh, it's a pretty cool idea. <laughs> know the local drug scene and save someone from drowning. <laughs> it just it sort of gives you insight into Audrey. All right, that's all for today. Thank you so much. I will catch you next time. <laughs>